I've had hundreds of people ask me to test vegetable oil as a substitute for motor oil in the crankcase of an engine. Will vegetable oil work to properly lubricate and cool the engine, or is it going to have a problem and will the engine self-destruct? Now what makes this very interesting to me is, if I'm in the middle of nowhere and I have some sort of a mechanical issue, if I happen to have some vegetable oil with me, would it work as an emergency substitute? Now obviously I wouldn't want to use vegetable oil in a crankcase for any period of time. It's obviously not meant to be there, but something is better than nothing in most cases. So is vegetable oil a good substitute? Well, I'm not sure if it is or not, but we've got some engines and we have some vegetable oil. So let's get this project underway. One of the best ways to determine whether or not an oil provides adequate lubrication is to use a lubricity tester. Now I built this device a while back and it has proven to be extremely reliable. The reason this device works better than a lot of the ones on the, in the market is because I don't mess with this device once the testing begins. A lot of the devices out there require someone to apply torque manually and that's a good way to mess up the results. And I don't want to do that. I want to find out whether or not we have good lubrication taking place whenever we're testing products. So what I'm going to be doing is inserting a new bearing inside the bearing holder and then I'll be applying the weight to the spinning race. This will spin about 800 RPMs. We'll let this run for 30 seconds and then we'll look at how much scoring has taken place on that bearing and that'll be a great indicator. Now what I'm going to do different today than we've done in the past is after we've used the vegetable oil for a solid hour under hard use. I'm going to drain out the vegetable oil and we're going to run it on the lubricity tester again to see if it's lost its ability to properly lubricate the engine. So it appears that vegetable oil has pretty good film strength compared to 10W30 conventional oil. The bearing on the right is the vegetable oil, the bearing on the left is 10W30. They are very close regarding the amount of scoring that has taken place. So the term vegetable oil seems a little bit broad. The specific type of oil I'm using is soybean oil. I pulled the material safety data sheet on the vegetable oil. The flash point is over 625 degrees Fahrenheit, so it should be able to take the heat of the engine just fine. We're gonna see how vegetable oil flows when it's really cold. Right now it's about 14 below zero inside the freezer, so let's see how this stuff flows. Most lawnmowers have an engine brake system, and for today's testing, I'll be using the engine brake to apply a load to the engine since I don't have the option of mowing grass. It's winter time, grass isn't growing right now, but this should work well. I went ahead and disconnected the engine stop switch previously, so this will allow the engine to keep running with the brake applied.
The oil level is still on full. What I'm going to do now is extract the vegetable oil that's in the crankcase so we can use it again in the lubricity test. One thing about lawnmowers, it doesn't take long to dirty up the oil. I'm going to repeat the lubricity test using the used vegetable oil. And the temperature of the oil is 63 degrees Fahrenheit. The bearing oil to the right is the used vegetable oil. This is the new vegetable oil and this is 10W30 oil. To me, they all look the same. I can't see any loss in lubrication from an hour of use inside the lawnmower engine. Vegetable oil in the crankcase of an engine, it seems as though it's a pretty decent substitute for engine oil, but only in an emergency situation. The only time we saw an issue was when the vegetable oil was placed under extremely cold conditions at minus 14, minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit, and of course, it turned into a block of ice. But whenever the engine was in use, the, it did extremely well. The vegetable oil held up. The engine survived an hour, even under a significant load at times. Anyway, I wouldn't do these projects if it wasn't for you guys offering up ideas. So, what do you want me to do next? Please offer up your suggestions and I'll try to get to your video ideas as quickly as possible. As usual, thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you'll like, share, and subscribe. Please take care and I look forward to seeing you next time.